one hilly churl could beat, say, three wild boars, then how many hilly churls would it take to reach the fighting prowess of Master Jean and Master Diluc? This is me. Or you. Or Traveler? Lumine? I don't know. However you want to refer to them. This is the main character in Genshin Impact. This is for what I'm just going to call the Traveler for the rest of this video. Specifically, we are talking about the Geo Traveler. This was something that you guys voted on. And uh, of course, as with most things, I'm, I'm still surprised that you guys are voting this much. There was a total of 27,000 votes on this specific poll. 51%, by the way, on... Uh, on on traveler by the way we did hit the sub goal of fifteen thousand. i don't want to follow up with saying that there's a new goal but i have a new goal in mind maybe we'll hit it maybe we won't but uh yeah if you guys want to sub you can you can do that all right so let's go ahead and take a look at the traveler here now just remember that you're gonna actually get uh pretty much full constellation levels and all that stuff just by playing the game so eventually you will get everything maxed completely out which is kind of nice so our normal attack here is called foreign rock blade just performs five quick rapid strikes and uh, charge attack just does two rapid sword strikes kind of like most other sword characters and plunging attack is the typical like falling from the sky just landing and doing aoe damage uh here you can kind of see how that breaks down at level six now keep in mind that whenever you first get the geo traveler it may be slightly different but this is how you can kind of see how the numbers break down honestly I'm not a huge fan of the way that this breaks down. I wish that these numbers were just a tad bit higher. For whatever reason, your Geo Traveler is a five star, but they definitely don't have like five star numbers in any respect and it, it kind of is unfortunate but next we have our elemental skill or our e ability called starfell sword you disgorge a meteorite from the depths of the earth dealing aoe geo damage and the meteorite is considered a geo construct and can be climbed or used to block attacks if you hold it you basically can kind of choose the positioning of it and kind of choose where you want to drop it uh this is interesting to say the least i'm just not a huge fan of geo constructs in general i hate how whenever i add one onto the playing field in the world um i may accidentally start to climb it in the middle of battle and it takes too long to hop off of it or to hop on top of it this one is also kind of wonky because it's not like if i'm using uh, my attacks i won't slip off of it you know how sometimes if you're using an attack you won't like slip off the back like if you're firing a bow and you get to the edge it won't let you fall off as long as you're continuously doing your attack you actually have to run off this one doesn't work that way you can kind of like slip and slide on top of it which is really annoying but it does decent damage actually 340 percent uh as geo damage is pretty nice um but you know it is what it is. Next, we have our Q ability, our elemental burst. So wake of earth, energizing the geo deep underground. You set off an expanding shockwave launching, surrounding enemies back and deals AOE geo damage. A stone wall is erected at the edge of the shockwave. These are considered geo constructs and can be used to block attacks. This one is not so bad. It's not as bad as the Starfell sword, but uh, it's just, again, they kind of get in the way. Not only do they block attacks from the enemy, but they also block my attacks from using a bow user or just anything like that. It just kind of gets in the way sometimes and that's frustrating to me. So you can kind of see uh, damage per shockwave, how all that stuff breaks down um, for anyone that's curious. Next, we have Shattered Dark Rock, which reduces Starfell Sword's cooldown by two. Next, we have Frenzied Rock Slide, which the final hit of a normal attack combo triggers a collapse, dealing 60% of attack as AoE Geo damage. This is actually nice, and this was one of the first things that I, uh, I kinda, why is, all right, do you guys see that this is like super yellow, but these are like pale yellow? Mihoyo, please fix. That bugs me. This was one of the talents that I kind of took into heavy consideration when trying to play around with some builds for Geo Traveler. Unfortunately, I couldn't get a build that made this make more sense. Like I tried using like Geo damage, like artifacts and stuff like that. It just didn't really work. Um, I never could get the DPS to make sense. I think it's more worthwhile to go a different route, but we'll talk about that here in a minute. Next, let's go over some constellations. So at constellation level one, we have Invincible Stonewall. Party members within the radius of Wake of Earth have their crit rate increased by 10% and have increased resistance against interruption. So this is kind of nice, especially if you have a crit rate character who you've been working on crit rate pretty heavily and you're super close to having like 100% crit rate or something like that. 
it is possible. Uh, this would actually be nice to up your crit rate to 100% and just do straight up crit damage constantly. Um, you could build, in theory, Geo Traveler to do that, but I don't think that the damage numbers, because of our normal attack, like our just regular talent, is just so low to begin with. It, we're just not going to do a ton of damage anyways, but that's actually pretty nice for other DPSs. At level two, we have Rock Core Meltdown, so Constellation level two. When the meteorite created by Starfell Sword is destroyed, it will also explode, dealing additional AoE Geo damage equal to the amount of damage dealt by Starfell Sword. So this is actually kind of nice because if you basically set up Starfell Sword to do decent damage when it explodes it'll just do that damage again at constellation level three we have will of the rock increases the level of rock wake of earth by three cool uh reaction force is level four so the shockwave triggered by wake of earth regenerates five energy for every enemy hit the maximum of 25 energy can be regenerated in this manner at one time so this is actually kind of cool because it just helps get your energy back to do wake of earth again so that you can just keep kind of spamming that um, especially if you have another geo character that you like to use you could also use this to switch off to them so that they can get a lot of energy as well um, it's just a decent way of generating energy and with Zhang Li actually in the picture now the energy cost on Zhang Li's elemental burst is only 40 energy so that's over half of your energy back just off of this like constellation alone so that's actually pretty cool um, if you can get it to trigger that way, that's actually pretty nice. Next, we actually have Constellation Level 5, which is called Meteorite Impact, increases Starfell Sword by 3. Cool. And then we have Everlasting Boulder. So the barrier created by Wake of Earth lasts 5 seconds longer, and the meteorites created by Starfell Sword last 10 seconds longer. That's fine. Um, you can only have three of the, um, the boulders on screen at any given time. Okay, so there's a quick test. It is actually eight seconds normally, and then uh, six seconds on the cooldown. So you can see we have two here, and you can kind of see, you can just climb them, do whatever you want to. Drop a third one here, and uh, wait for this to cool down. And if we go to place a fourth one, it will get rid of our first one. So you can only have three at once, but the duration of them do um, increase with that last constellation. So that's pretty nice. Now, there are essentially two different routes that we can go with building the Geo Traveler. Of course, we can have a DPS build or we could have a support build. Uh, being that uh, through my testing, I personally preferred them as a DPS, but the support build is definitely still viable. I think most people are probably gonna build them as a support if they build them as anything. Uh, let's go ahead and go over the support build first and then we'll talk about DPS afterwards because DPS is something that I can actually kind of show. So in terms of support, basically what we're going to go with here is just something that keeps our energy recharge up as much as possible. So any kind of weapon that grants extra energy recharge is going to be super important. So Skyward Blade, probably the top choice if you have it. It's not free to play friendly in any manner, but it is there and it is a really good option. Uh, Favonius Sword also works really well here. Its energy recharge is gonna be just fine if you don't have Skyward Blade, nothing wrong with that. Could also go with something like the Flute. It doesn't necessarily grant us a lot of energy recharge, but it does actually help us increase some damage while we're on the field. So the Flute actually kind of provides like a sort of pseudo DPS and support kind of build. Um, just because it doesn't really have energy recharge. Uh, Sacrificial Sword makes some sense. If you don't have a character that can utilize it, um, Geo Traveler can use it. Uh, it kind of helps get your constructs up quicker, your Starfell star Sword. But I think the biggest deal with it is that it has energy recharge on it. I personally would use this on either Bennett or uh, Sing Sho, but if you don't have either of those characters, then it works well on here. And then you can kind of go with the Filet Blade to get more attack so that you can kind of do extra attack with your, your burst or your skills and stuff like that. Um, that's kind of following the same line as the Flute. It just kind of works as like a hybrid. Um, and then after that, if you wanted to, you could run Cool Steel. That's also an option. But I think the Cool Steel is uh, inferior to the Filet Blade personally. I think the only reason you would use Cool Steel over Filet Blade is if for whatever reason your team comp made more sense to run Cool Steel. But both of them are going to be increasing attack percent, which is just going to help your burst and your skill do more damage when you use them. Now, in terms of artifacts, this is going to be kind of difficult to show. So I actually started grinding these so that I could show you guys a little bit of uh, stuff with them. So our top choice is actually going to be the Archaic 
Petra. The reason that we're going to go with this is the gaining 15% geo damage bonus is great. Upon obtaining an elemental shard created through a crystallized reaction, all party members gain 35% damage bonus for that particular element for 10 seconds. So only one form of elemental damage bonus can be gained in this manner at any one time. So essentially, this is like the ultimate, in my opinion, this is the ultimate thing that makes Traveler a support is this specific set right here. Because as you're, you know, doing your, your Starfield sword and your elemental burst and stuff like that, and you're getting these crystallized reactions, if you can pick up the reaction that makes sense to your DPS, like let's say you're running Kaching and you pick up a uh, an electro crystal, that's gonna give you 35% damage of electro damage on top of what you already have. So it's basically just gonna help increase that type of damage. And then of course it works with many, many other situations. The issue is that it doesn't really work too well with physical builds. So that would kind of, it would have to be particular to your situation if you want to even run this, but that's kind of what I see the purpose of this artifact set being. Of course, we could go with the trusty noblest oblige. Basically elemental burst do plus 20%. Then after you use the burst, everybody in your party gains 20% attack for 12 seconds, which is just great. You could also mix and match these. So if you want to gain the 15% geo damage bonus, that makes sense. And then you could uh, gain the 20% elemental burst damage there as well. I think that would actually be a decent option. And then if you don't go with a sword that actually has energy recharge, I would highly consider going with the exile set. Um, just in case if you needed a ton of ex energy recharge, like if you wanted to just like hyper, you know, get this burst off as much as possible like maybe you need that crit rate going with a two piece of exile two piece of scholar could make some sense but i think that's super specific and probably not um probably not worth for most team builds but i think that would actually be a kind of fun option to use but you could go with a full set of the exile either way using an elemental burst generates two energy for all party members excluding you every two seconds for six seconds and this effect cannot be stacked so there's that if you want to use that. Now, no matter which set you end up going with, I definitely do think Geo Damage is going to be pretty big as a support because you're basically trying to get off your burst and your skills uh, to do the damage. And then after that, Energy Recharge is going to be huge so that you can get into those bursts and do them as often as possible. And then always don't forget about attack because everything freaking scales off of attack. Now, in terms of leveling up your talents, I definitely would... Um, <laughs> I definitely would say that Starfell Sword, um, boosting this skill damage right here is probably going to be huge as a support. It's going to do a lot of damage, and I think that's probably the best option to go with first. And then after that, work on Wake of Earth so that you can do, you know, as much elemental burst damage as possible. And then if you plan on even, you know, leveling it up, you can do the normal attack as well. But as a support, you typically don't do that very often. Now, on to the fun stuff, the DPS build. So the DPS build is a little bit... Um, funner to play in my opinion uh top option that i would actually recommend is the sword of dissension so sword of dissension basically grants you attack percent but hitting enemies with normal or charge attacks grant a 50 percent chance to deal 200 percent attack as damage in a small aoe and this can only occur every 10 seconds additionally if the traveler equips the sword of dissension their attack is increased by 66 just a flat 66 so increasing a ton of freaking damage is amazing. Unfortunately, this sword is only obtainable through the PS4, so if you play on PS4 and you have this sword, use it. If not, we can talk about other options. So the Aquila Favonia definitely is going to make a ton of sense here. Uh, physical damage increase and the attack is increased by 20% triggers uh, on taking damage. The soul of Falcon of the West awakens, holding the banner of resistance aloft, regenerating HP equal to 100% of attack and dealing 200% of attack adds damage to surrounding enemies. Uh, it's a DPS machine and it's going to give you a little bit of HP back, which is uh, pretty awesome. Next, we actually have the Black Sword, which is my personal choice. Uh, increases crit rate, of course, and increases damage dealt by normal and charged attacks by 20%. Additionally, regenerates 60% of attack as HP when the normal charge attack scores a crit hit, and it can only occur once every five seconds. That's personally what I go with, simply because I don't have any five stars, but it's also very freaking cool, and it doesn't it allows me to build crit damage in my artifacts rather than crit rate. Next, we have the flute, which we've already talked about in the support build. Basically, it's a DPS machine. It's really good. Doing that extra damage after you gain the five harmonics is great, and it's pretty much well-renowned as a great sword already. Next, we have the Black Cliff Sword. It's actually going to increase crit damage, and after defeating an enemy, 
attack is increased by 12% for 30 seconds and the effect has a maximum of three stacks and the duration of each stack is independent of the others. So crit damage is great. Honestly, it I would feel like either one of these is perfectly fine. It looks like the Black Cliff actually would outscale the Black Sword just slightly with its base stat. So the Black Cliff Longsword would technically be a little bit better, especially late game, but the Black Sword is going to be just fine for the majority of the, the, the time that you use Traveler anyways. Now, some more free to play options. You could definitely go with the Harbinger of Dawn. It's going to increase crit damage, which is great. Uh, and then when HP is above 90% increases your crit rate by 14%, which just helps out a ton in doing damage, especially you could just build your crit rate and your artifacts so that the crit damage comes from your weapon and yada, yada, yada. Definitely think that's a very viable option. Last but not least, we have the Filet Blade, which is uh, personally one of my favorite weapons to use. Uh, I don't use it much anymore. I've kind of outgrown it, unfortunately, but it, it has attack percent and on hit a 50% chance to deal 240% attack damage on a single enemy. And it can only occur once every 15 seconds. It's pretty gnarly. I actually really like the Filet Blade. Now in terms of artifacts, as a DPS, this is kind of self-explanatory at this point, but we could go with a full four piece of the Gladiator's Finale, gaining 18% here. And because we are a sword wielder, we will gain a 35% buff to our normal attack, which is perfectly fine. And honestly, the normal attack is kind of where we are lacking in our talents anyway. So this makes a ton of sense. Any kind of gain that we can get on our normal attack would be great. Or we could actually go with a two piece of the Gladiator's Finale and a two piece of the Noblest Oblige to help do some extra damage with our elemental burst or we could go with a two piece of the gladiators finale and a two piece of the archaic petra to gain a 15 percent geo damage bonus kind of do some mixing and matching with the martial artist set to help increase your normal and charge attack the braveheart to get the extra 18 percent would actually be kind of nice and you could also consider the berserker set to help you get extra crit rate so that you can just up that crit rate even more i think what makes the most sense is all of the last ones that we just talked about the martial artist um, even the show's Jorner set, like anything that basically increases the attack at a two piece, I would only do these as two pieces. I think that would make the most sense so that you can kind of spread out how you, uh, are doing your damage. Or if you want to do like a 15% to your normal and charge attack there, and then you could just do an extra 18% with the brave heart. Or if you do have the gladiators finale that works as well. Just know that as you're building your DPS, probably the main thing that I would focus on is gonna be physical damage. It makes the most sense out of all of the builds that I tried to build. Uh, it makes the most sense to me. I did try like a full geo build, trying to, you know, maximize the use of that um, that ascension talent where it creates the last hit as a geo damage, plus your skill and your burst do geo damage. It just didn't really work that well, but you know, I think if you build geo damage, you want to go more of a support like hybrid situation, but physical damage should be top priority. Crit rate, crit damage, of course, always huge on DPSs. Uh, attack is going to be really, really important here. And then energy recharge makes some sense as well so that you can keep getting off those bursts as often as possible. Now, as a DPS, when it comes to these talents, I definitely would focus on your normal attack first because you're going to be using that the most often. And then because the multiplier is so high on this, I still would consider this my like next choice or even do these both at the same time, however you want to do that. Uh, and then Wick of Earth is probably last priority, but still kind of a big deal because it is going to do quite a bit of damage. Now, um, it's time to go beat up some things. So this is a set that we're going to be showing off. Basically, this set is uh, full glad and it's got a crit damage on the helmet there. So you can kind of see all this stuff breaks down. Now, my black sword isn't very like amazing, unfortunately, but 45% uh, or 47% on crit rate, 122 on crit damage is pretty nice. 58% on physical bonus. So let's uh, let's go show this off a little bit. But we're going to get the drop on him. I'm going to do our lunging attack hey -ya! and as you can see we're doing some pretty decent numbers i mean when we crit we're doing bruh come on let's go hit some of these guys so there was three grand so as you can see we are hitting him and we are slowly falling down which is super annoying and it makes it to where it almost is impossible to hit certain enemies. As you can see, we're, we're missing some of these swings. That That's kind of annoying about these constructs. I wish at least they, they weren't so just flimsy. Eh, we can do that 
charged attack there, which is actually kind of cool. Could do two of those. And he's dead. So in my quest, actually um, working on some different builds and stuff for this, I did actually get a geo damage uh, archaic Petra piece, which is amazing. Um, and I boosted it all the way up. I don't really have a whole lot to make that full. Like, I don't even think I have a two piece, do I? Yeah, I don't even have the other piece to even do a two piece. But basically, I just kind of wanted to show this, but 2,800 damage on that is not bad at all. Pick up this and let's do some damage here. Yep, not bad. 2,800 damage. I think that's actually pretty nice. And uh, yeah, you can see the Geo Constructs work pretty well. 4,820, that crit. Sit down. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the Traveler in Geo form. Now, um, I do think that the Animo form, the Animo, is a little bit more interesting and a little bit more useful in most scenarios, but we will uh, have to talk about them at a later date. So thank you guys so much for hanging out. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know how you guys have built your Geo Traveler, if you even have. I would suspect most people haven't, but as always, I'll post another poll as soon as this goes up and we will get into the next character. Um, it's going to be all four stars this go around and uh, somebody has been requesting Beto for quite a while. So I will be putting her in the polls. If you guys want her to win, vote for her. Uh, I'll also include Diona and Kaya as well, just because it's basically a meme at this point. But yeah, thank you guys for hanging out. See you guys later. <laughs>